Hello YouTube, myself and my awesome pin are back with another computer science video. But once again, we are missing something. I'm going to need my pad of paper. Woohoo! Who knew so much computer science could get done with pen and paper? So today we're going to be talking about something awesome, which a lot of people have a hard time with. Legit, a lot of people struggle with this. We're going to be talking about recursive functions. Squiggly line added once again for dramatic effect. What are recursive functions? Well, they are functions which call themselves. And if you're watching this video, you've probably been introduced to recursive functions and you don't understand how they work or why they work. And that's limiting your ability to re write recursive functions. So I'm going to take you through a basic recursive function, which just adds uh, a number plus every number smaller than itself. Um, and then returns the sum of those numbers. You've probably had to write something like this for your CS101 class before. So let's say that we have a function. It's going to return an integer. And we're going to call it recursive add. And we're going to pass it int an integer. We'll just an int, whatever. Now, how are we going to write this function? This isn't the part I want to focus on so much as why it works, but I'm going to go through this briefly. So with recursive functions, we're going to have an if-else statement inside. And let's with the if, we want there to be some base value that when the value of the, you know, whatever variable is being manipulated by the function, when it reaches this value, we're going to return uh, a, sol a number. We're going to return something besides the function itself. So this is like the escape clause. So in this case we're going to want to say if n int equals 1 we're going to return an int because at that point it's going to be a 1. And if you don't get what I'm doing here at all um, try to stick with it but you might need to watch a more basic video on how recursive functions should be implemented. I want to discuss more of what it actually does. Okay, so what we're going to do is else, well, what's going to be our recursive statement? We'll say return, uh, let's do a, we're going to actually return the variable, an int, plus, Um, recursive add of an int minus one. So, what is happening here? Let us not forget our closing brackets. We're very good at following syntax rules. Okay, so. When we call this function and we pass it an integer, the first thing it does is check to make sure that integer doesn't equal 1. Because what we're trying to do is find the sum of every number, you know, including the number itself, and, and, and the sum of every number preceding it. Um, so if it's 1, then the sum of 1 and every number smaller than it is just 1, and then you return an int, and that's, that's your answer. But let's say we passed it the number 5. So it would check its if-else statement, and obviously it's going to know, well, we're not going to just return 5 to the function caller because an int does not equal 1. So what's it going to do? It's going to return 5 plus, uh-oh, here I am calling myself again. I'm going to pass the number that I have on file, which is 5 minus 1, so 4. So what happens is we end up going back to the top, and we throw in the number 4. And okay, we do the same thing again. It's not one. What am I going to do? I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to return the number four to whatever's calling me. Plus, oh, I'm going to call myself again. Well, I'm currently holding the value four in n int, so I'm going to subtract one from that and pass it into myself. I'm, re I'm putting in three. So I'm not equal to one. Let's do that again. Oh, I've got to return my, uh, this value, an integer, plus what am I returning? Oh, myself. Same thing happens again, but this time we pass it a 2, okay? 
And through the same process, we come back here. We have to return that number that we're holding, 2 plus. And here I am calling myself again. But this is the important part. This is where we actually escape the function. We're going to pass in 2 minus 1, which is 1. OK. And it turns out that we're actually equal to 1. So we're going to end up returning an integer. And I. I did this in the wrong order. Each time we called this right here, each time we reached this point, we had a little plus before we leave the function. So that plus sign's already there. We're going to just return the 1 and amend it to that. And we end up recursively by calling our own, you know, by the function calling itself. We work through 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. We really, what we're doing here is creating a stack. And... Stacks are, you know, first on, last off. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but basically in memory, we put a 5, we can't get to it because we put a 4 on top of it, we can't get to it because we put a 3 on top of it. We're creating this stack, and when we hit the top of the stack, or the bottom, depending on how you want to look at it, we hit this return function that's not itself. What it does is it jumps back up the stack. It adds all these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it returns it to whoever called it. So if we had just said, you know, um, sum equals recursive add. Why is it so blurry? Sorry, that's, that's why it's a good thing I give commentary. A five. Then, as soon as sum gets called, it would it would start going through this process and it would build this stack, hit the one, and bounce back through and return the sum of all these values into the variable sum. Hopefully, that gives you some idea of why recursion works and, and how it actually takes place within our computer memory. Um, if you have questions, post them in the comments. If you'd like a more sophisticated example, I, I hope this one serves to illustrate the point well. I think it's the simplest way to illustrate how recursion works. Then let me know. Thanks for watching.